Welcome to Morning Prayer on Monday the 21st of December. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence. That we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The earth is the Lord's, and all that fills it, the compass of the world, and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can rise up in his holy place? those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, of Ho the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 121. Oh, I lift my eyes to the hills, for where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to stumble. He who watches over you will not sleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. It is he who will keep your soul. Um, the Lord the shall, Lord shall watch keep over watch your over your going out and your coming in from this time forth for evermore. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Isaiah 52, starting at verse 13 and carrying on till the end of chapter 53. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who were astonished at him. So marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals, so he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has, had not been told them they shall see, and that which they have not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before them, before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. 
like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall, pro shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's so much, obviously it's quoted a lot as uh, a prophecy about Jesus, isn't it? And you can see Jesus um, through all of that, maybe because we've been told so many times that this is uh, um, refers uh, to Jesus, although refers to Jesus isn't the correct way of putting it, I know, but uh, one who bears our sorrows and he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And yet at the same time, there isn't the, any sense of him being the unique one somehow. There isn't the there isn't the sense of him being the son of God in that. So the, although there is a lot of, you can see um, uh, the sort of, that with looking at Jesus and what he went through for us, looking at Isaiah 52 and 53, we can see, wow. This but that fits. completely distorts mm. reading Isaiah. And our first step always is to read the Old Testament as the Old Testament and then to pick up the echoes and the afterlife of the text, as it were. Mm. So the first thing is that see my servant and we relate my servant there to all the other references to servant well, in this part, part of Isaiah. Yeah. The, well, it also as well as having been so conditioned to think that this is a prophecy about Jesus, but looking at it, as you say, in the context in which it was written and the context in which we find it in Isaiah, um, it also uh, describes or talks about so many of the prophets suffered terribly and it wasn't because they'd done anything wrong, but it was because of the sin of the people that they suffered. So obviously we can see that yes. in this passage as well. Why I resist calling this a prophecy about Jesus is because it summons up notions of prediction. And I don't think there is any prediction here at all. I think that's a misunderstanding of the way prophecy works. Here is a prophecy which is about the servant, possibly the prophet himself, which can be reused in other cases. So we have a, a primary reading which is all about what's happening in the time of this Isaiah. And this Isaiah is uh, someone who we've already seen God wants to prosper. Uh, it is too small a thing that he should be just a prophet to the nations, he's got to be a prophet to the world. Um, but in the meantime he is someone who is being despised and rejected by his own people. Mm. And why it lacks any sense of uniqueness is because this is typical of what happens with the prophets. Mm. And so uh, that means that Jesus, as a prophet in his own right, um, suffers a similar fate to the earlier prophets. Mm. This passage is particularly rich 
in uh, possibilities for alluding to the life of Jesus or echoing back. Even making his grave with the rich and he was put into the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, yes. wasn't he? Who was a rich man, a follower of Jesus. Um, but in principle, yeah. reading the scriptures, you start with the text as it is in its own context and secondarily where that's used in other parts of the script and you mm. always recognize it's a derivative use of the passage. Yes, so and Jesus himself when he was heading for Jerusalem said uh, uh, about oh Jerusalem you who killed the prophet and then he but he said something about it's not uh, right or not possible for a prophet to die outside Jerusalem and there he was referring to himself as well and putting himself in in the line, the line of the of prophets mm. so uh, yes so it is, the, there will be things here which um, don't quite capture mm. Jesus uniqueness being one of the that Jesus is unique none of the other prophets are mm. unique in anything like a comparable sense but we don't have to match every part of this to details about Jesus a lot of it has been picked up and seen oh yes Jesus was like this too and he fulfills the prophecy in the sense of here is uh, something that is true of prophets in general it's true par excellence of Jesus it's that par excellence yes really but it is uh... it is not saying this is pointing directly to Jesus it's pointing directly to the servant the servant and we search the identity of the servant in all the seven passages in Isaiah 40 to 55 and uh, follow it through and Jesus then referred to himself as one who'd come to serve yes and he washed the disciples feet so he saw himself as coming to serve so again he saw himself in yes if not quite this mold but in a Yes. And, and more has been written about this passage in Isaiah than any other passage in Isaiah. Um, mm. But it wasn't hugely used um, uh, in Judaism between Isaiah and the New Testament. Mm. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. The wilderness and dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not, for your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Lift, Lift up your strength, voice, voice with strength, strength, O herald of good tidings. And we move to the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith as precious as ours through the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ, May God, may grace and peace be yours in abundance, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us, through these things, his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and may become participants in the divine nature. For this very reason 
you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance and endurance with godliness and godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love. But if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and is forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to conform, confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ will be richly provided for you. Therefore, I intend to keep on reminding you of these things though you know them already and are established in the truth that has come to you. I think it's right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, that I will make every effort so that after my departure you may be able at any time to recall these things. The way it starts is so... Uh... Um, when you, you can read these passages and there's so many lovely thoughts and encouraging words here but it is sort of uh, some of them can be lost because there's so much here but I was struck by to those who have received a faith as precious as ours not through their own righteousness he doesn't say but those who've received a faith through the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ it's through his righteousness that we receive faith, not through our own righteousness. Yes. And I was struck by that as you were reading it. And also by the, for if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes we can feel as if we're being ineffective and unfruitful. Uh, it's not necessarily because these things are lacking. Sometimes it's because, the, um, to mix lots of metaphors, because the ground we are ploughing is very hard ground and we appear to be unfruitful and ineffective. But it's also worth thinking about these things and contemplating them and praying about them to make sure it's not because of the lack of these things that we're being unfruitful yes. and ineffective at times. Yes, faith, goodness, knowledge self-control, endurance, godliness, uh, godliness mutual, mutual affection, affection and, and love. love. I think sometimes it's very easy for the love, surprisingly, for love to slip away mm. and duty uh, take, over. take over. There's also the very striking thing about participants in the divine nature. Mm. Uh, you may become participants in the divine nature that you and me and me and you and us in God, it's that Father, Son and Holy Spirit inviting us to share in the life of the Trinity. The but mm. it is rarely picked up in the with the clarity of this mm. passage and it's rarely picked up in preaching or theology. There is a particular mm. feature of Church of England Anglican theology to, to include this particular feature. Um, mm. that the promise that we have is about being welcomed into the fullness of life. We're made in the image and likeness of God and that image and likeness is currently obscured in different ways but the idea is that it should be completely unveiled. When we see him we will be like him and so mm. the calling is to be properly participants in the divine nature. Mm. Now it is time to awake out of sleep. For the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. For the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. For the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ to make no provision for the flesh. For the night is far spent and the day is at hand. And so we come to the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. 
Like the sun in the morning sky, the Saviour of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Blessed be the Lord the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Like, like the, the sun in the morning sky, the Saviour of the world will dawn. Like, like rain upon, upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for all these passages of scripture that we read in our morning prayer service that are so encouraging about uh, you shining uh, uh, into the darkness and uh, about the uh, dawning like the sun, the morning sun on a new day. Father God, we so need to see your light shining uh, at this time with the news of a uh, um, new mutation of the uh, coronavirus and its uh, rampant spreading throughout the London and the southeast of England and we hope not other places. We, we cannot help Lord but uh, at least some of us feel a bit of a shudder of fear and a sense of the darkness closing in. Father God, we, we come to you and we pray that you would uh, shine your light uh, into our hearts and minds, that you would uh, make sure that hope uh, continues uh, to be there in our hearts and minds. Uh, we need you so much, Lord, uh, at this time. Uh, there's so many passages in the Bible, so many instances where we see the words be not afraid, do not fear. And so, Father God, for those who um, the coronavirus has been frightening enough, but this this recent news uh, makes it seem even more scary. We pray, Lord, that we might know that uh, uh, you walk with us through this time. And we pray, Lord, that we will see your light shining in the darkness and know that the darkness can never overcome your light. Amen. Amen. And we thank you, Father, for the way that the vaccine is being uh, developed and authorised in different countries and for the assurance that the vaccine is effective against the new strain of, of coronavirus too. And we pray that many people will agree to uh, take part in, in getting themselves vaccinated and encouraging others in the same direction. But Heavenly Father, right now there are uh, huge difficulties for different families in reorganising Christmas because one set of plans have been put in place and now the rules have changed right across the country. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for everybody as they reconsider their own plans, as they seek to keep themselves and others safe. And Father, we pray particularly that you will be with families where the negotiations are delicate, where misunderstanding uh, arises between family members. Pray that there may not be any growth in misunderstanding, but a, a readiness to uh, understand where people are coming from as they withdraw invitations or withdraw acceptances to spend Christmas together. Father, we pray too that you would be uh, very present with those who are isolated and alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Lord, while the, all this is going on with the virus, 
At the same time, those complicated and difficult Brexit negotiations are, are well, we presume, coming to the end, uh, coming to the end of the road. And Lord, we uh, um, we don't know how that is going to end up, but it does seem to be a bit of a mess. And uh, we pray, Lord, for everyone whose lives would, is whose lives are directly impacted. Uh, so many businesses are suffering because of the COVID virus, uh, but at the same time they've been suffering for even longer uh, from the uh, possible ramifications of, of Brexit. Uh, and uh, we do pray, Lord, for, for all who are in business. We pray, Lord, for all those lorry drivers who are stuck in their lorries on the M20 even now as queues build up. Lord, we just pray for the future of our country. We pray for the negotiators. We pray for the negotiators on both sides and for all people in the different European countries whose lives will be impacted, particularly if there's a no-deal Brexit. So, Father God, we bring this situation as well to you and ask that in your mercy you will show us a good way through. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bring before you the arrangements for Christmas in our churches and in our own homes as people consider whether they do feel safe coming to church or what other arrangements they need to come to. We pray that you would guide each one of us that we might be able to mark out Christmas and the birth of our Saviour in a special way. Father, we thank you for the opportunities which we have to do that within church but we pray that for those who are unable to make it there may be something very special in each and every home in Jesus name we ask Amen. Amen God our Redeemer who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your son grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our judge who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily, daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then Amen. We'll be back later on for Compline this evening on YouTube at 8 o'clock.